Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind with me, Larry Wydell. Let's get started. Good morning, beginners. This is Diana Macias. On today's call, we have part two of Million Dollar Earner, Mario Arizon, interviewing Larry Wydell. Let's get this call started. I'm going to turn it over our host, Adam Wydell. Thank you, Deanna. Let's hello to uh, Mario and Larry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mario, I'm going to hand it off to you to uh, get us going. All right, perfect. All right, Larry. So, man, last week's call was unbelievable. And, uh, Larry, we got so many people asking more questions, and, and we didn't get to finish, um, you know, some of the big topics that were – on, on the call that I want you to expand on, Larry, because I think this is vital for people can have explosive growth just like you had. And one of the biggest things was, was what were your guidelines? What, what would you do, Larry, for explosive growth? Okay, Mario, thanks so very much. And, Mario, you know, I'm enjoying this so much. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, that's the whole idea. You know, when you start a new thing, you've got to be numbers-oriented. You can't sit around and pinch yourself, look how pretty everything, this, that, the other. You've got to be go, go, go. And uh, you've got to have big dreams. We want to do something big. I don't want to do business as usual. And we look out there. I, you know, for me to do business, as, you know, to get really excited, I've got to think about number one. I'm not good enough to get people excited about going for number two. And so that's the stinking message, everybody. It's like, well, it was great. I'm all fired up. People are really fired up. Fired up about what? What are you doing? What's your goal? Don't miss the message. I'm showing you what I'm doing at my level so you can get and look at yourself. What am I missing? Maybe I don't have a goal that's lit the deepest furnace to really cause my insides to roar to life. We started looking at it and saying, you've got to start thinking the possibilities. What do you think about? What do you think about the wild possibility? You've got to get a game plan in your mind that you can get excited about that makes some kind of sense to you, enough sense where you could feel like it would work. They say it can't be done. Why don't we go for it? So in your life, uh, what are you going for? And see, the reality that drive me is success is not an accident, Mario. So I've got to work hard. I've got to have a strategy, but I've got to have a goal that really fires me up so I don't forget about it. You don't forget Christmas. You know, you might forget President's Weekend or one of these other minor uh, holidays, you know. You don't forget Christmas, Easter. You don't forget your birthday. And why do people say, well, I lose focus? Because you don't have any goals. You're not going for anything great. You know, and so I know that, you know, it's got to work, work hard. You've got to have a strategy. You've got to have something that's like super duper exciting for you, or you're going to be, you're going to have a, you're going to be a meatball how you're going through it. And you can settle into the meatball mode real easy. All of us can. You've got to be able to coach yourself. And so I started thinking, Larry, you're in, maybe you're in meatball mode. You thought you were the big hitter call. You got all these people coming in. Wydell hierarchy. Just taking it for granted, maybe you're in meatball mode. So that's what I said. Well, what would be the greatest thing? Go for number one. See if you're good enough. That's what we did in the beginning, and that's what we did. And so, Mario, that's what's behind it. And success is not guaranteed, and that's why I overdo. That's the second chapter of my book. you got to attack that growth is not an option. And all this is leading up to the replacement guidelines, because if you don't understand this thing, you don't have – the compelling drive to follow through, and these guidelines are just other crap that you've learned about and you know, but you don't use them. You know how you learn? You know how you learn the business? You do the business. You go out with somebody who's doing it. You know how you learn the promotions, the guidelines that are going to work for you? You do the darn things. And so, uh, I growth is not an growth is not an option. I always push for growth, and. Uh, Things can, remember this, things can always be better, but they ain't going to get better by themselves. And if they're not getting better, they're getting worse. And so uh, the bottom line is, if you're going to be happy, satisfied, content, fulfilled, you have to win. And past a certain point, winning is getting a lot done, but pretty soon you're going to run out of 
time. And uh, you're going to need to start adding people to your team. And you're going to know how to – you need to know how to treat them and, and to bring them into the vision. And, uh, you know, the thing is people say, well, you know, I, I, I believe in God, and I believe God's got something great for me, and I believe he wants to bless me. But he can't bless a sack of crap. He can't bless a, a bag of garbage. He will. I mean, he can take – you know, he can go to the, 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 the dump – and turn it into a, uh, you know, a Ferrari. If it, but, but if he takes you and you're, you're disorganized and you're sporadic and, and you, know, you, you, you don't even inspire yourself, you're not going for anything, you're not disciplined, you don't have a philosophy, you don't have a game plan, and, and you're just a meatball. Well, if he blesses the meatball and turns you into a monster of success, you know what that message is? You don't have to work. You, know, you, don't, have to be, you don't have to be organized. You know, you, you know, it's going to send a message. All you got to do is prosperity gospel. That's a big lie. Believe in Jesus, and you can make millions. He'll just give it to you because he died on the cross. They, you know, paid your, you know, for your sin. So he's going to save you, and he's, he's opening up an account now for you so you can have a free million dollars a year just because you believed in him. What a, what a load of garbage. You know, prosperity gospel, my butt. You know, you're going to have to work. You got to do what everybody else does. You know what I learned, Mario, when I was 28 years old? You still, you know, the thing about being a Christian is he gives you the power to do all the work you got to do, but you still got to do massive work. But you just got a different source for it. But you got to get organized where you can be blessed. And so, you know, there's a saying, it's the greatest thing that relates exactly to this, Mario, in the uh, service yesterday, Romans 13, 7. This senior pastor who's turned things over to his son, here's what he's doing in his quote-unquote retirement. He's translating the Bible verse by verse. And, uh, it's, you know, some people uh, not only translate, translating the whole Bible. That's what I'm going to do, you know, in my retirement. Anyway, uh, how about that for a goal? I bet he's more excited, more gung-ho than he's ever been in his life. You know, and so... He, he gave the a translation on Romans 13, 7, which is, you know, he's talking about the gold, you know, the medal winners, you know, the, you know, honoring the military. And he said, give honor to those who deserve honor. And the, what, what he said there really got my attention. You know why? Because they inspire us. And so, uh, you know, isn't that the greatest thing to be somebody who has so much success, has got so much drive that you inspire other people to greatness. But you got, you know, and he goes and talks about, he had all the examples, but it takes courage to say, we're going to go. Because, and then when somebody stands, that's what I want you guys to get from this message. If you are in charge of your family for your kids, in charge of your business, in charge of wherever you are, if you want that world family, team, business, club, whatever, to do great things, somebody's got to stand up and say, we're going for it. And, and it, it, it has to do with anything. I mean, one of our guys up in Richmond went over to, on our expansion, we did the, the UK in 2003, and he got involved in the, uh, just to meet people and with the Cambridge Shooting Club. And the Cambridge Shooting Club was the worst. But he went in and said, uh, we're going to be number one in Britain. We're going to kick everybody's butt. And they were looking at him. What an idiot. Guess what? Within two years, they were number one in, in England. You know, somebody's got to stand up and say, I'm going for it. I got the guts to go for it. Who wants to go with me? So that's the message that I, we're trying to get here. That's what we're doing with Operation Warpath. It ain't business as usual. Because business as usual doesn't get you anywhere. You've got to overcome the traction and the friction that wants to hold you in place, all the interruption. But, you know, if you're going two miles an hour down the road, anything that happens will stop you. You know, I can't, you, know you can't even run over a, a, a tree limb on the road. You know, that's all it takes to stop you. But if you've got, uh, you got momentum, you can jump over anything. And so, anyway, that's the idea. So what was the question, Mario? You wanted to know about uh, my <laughs> guidelines for Larry, you're awesome, man. Larry, yes, I want to talk about that because um, 
you know, th- th- I think there is a confusion. We hear we hear something and some, and then we hear something else. And one big thing that I learned on the big hitters call, and I learned from you, and and from the Giants here is little little guidelines, little income, big guidelines, big income. Well, you know, and but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I misunderstood that. And but it helped me build build a million dollar income and help my guys get big. Um, expand on that, Larry. Uh, am I wrong in my thinking? Mis- misunderstand what? You don't misunderstand anything. What? What exactly? What exactly? Uh, maybe I was. I don't know. I never seen that small. Small never e- equals a big income. But maybe I'm wrong because there's different yeah. things. Well, that, uh, like, yeah. I don't know. Well, you're Ex- at, expand you're on asking, that. You're asking the wrong <laughs> guy on that, you know. And uh, uh, I, you got to get big, man. You got to get big, and you got to make up your mind to get big. That's the whole reason. Before I went into guidelines, it's just I hate wasting my breath. I hate telling people how to do crap that I know they're never going to do. And I know this stuff inside out, but I don't want to talk to a lady. You know what the Bible says? Entrust yourself to faithful men and women. You know, you know, don't cast your pearls before the swine. And you know the swine are? The people are laying in the mud, grumbling, you know, just trying to get through the day, you know, looking for a little kernel of corn or something, but just happy to slop around. And so the main thing I want to tell people is you got to wake your butt up. Otherwise, learn about these guidelines or nothing. The part that I said up till now is to tell you it's a waste of your and my time for you to be listening to me about guidelines for promotions if you're not going to go for something great. Because the first thing you've got to do is make up your mind to go for something great, and then you recruit people to that vision. Then when they get in there, like Ali Carew said, you know, they're doing the numbers, and he's driving it, to, you know, to uh, prospect. Now your message is about big, 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 big. It's about huge. It's about unlimited growth. It's about changing your life, opportunity to become financially independent, totally rock solid, secure financially, in charge of your life. And people talk about domination and growth rather than doing these little piss poor presentations. I tell you what, it starts with a vision. Then you recruit people to that vision. And then they take that vision out, but you got to reinforce it. I mean, you know, you can, you know, the air can go out of the tire if you don't. So that was the whole thing about being a person of honor and being a person because if you you're able to do something great. You had the courage to stand up and go and do something great, like the, you know, the uh, he was talking yesterday about these Medal of Honor winners who go in there and they got, you know, who, you know, in in war, you know, they put themselves in line of fire. Some of them have jumped on grenades to save their team. You know, courage, that inspires people. But folks, if you're not going to inspire anybody, if you're not going to have the courage to go for any great, yeah, it's a, you, you need hang up. You know, go, go talk to a wholesaler, make a sale, be happy, pet the dog. But in the real world, you got to go for real big things. And so <laughs> let's go to – but that's where it starts. Because then people want to grow. They want to work hard. They, they want to be like you. Let me ask you this. Your people want to be like you? They want your life? Are they inspired? You know, I learned a long time ago, you've got to be the person your people think is the hardest working person in the world. You've got to be the person your people think have the biggest vision in the world. You've got to become the most inspiring person in the world they know personally. Every time they get around you, you got to fire their butts up. And uh, you don't do that by any kind of game, just by being you. So anyway, here's the guidelines, my promotion guidelines. Let's get exceptions out of the way. It's stupid to handcuff by saying yourself you never make an exception. Even if you're in factories, you're not going to have a perfect one, one out, you know, 100 out of 100. That's why they have factory outlets, folks. And people have different... You know, they have different – people are different. People have different circumstances. You need to have the heart and the humanity to recognize that. You know, when I was in high school, we got Christian Davis. Christian, when I was in high school, the coach really didn't like me because I was one of the Air Force kids. And, uh, they, you know, the town people up in West Ham, in the Hamptons, kind of, some of them had a bad attitude towards the Air Force kids because we were pretty much better than everybody else. But uh, 
I could I really couldn't jump as a basketball player. I was a stinking high scorer on the team, but you know I couldn't really jump. I was vertically challenged. I was the white guy who can't jump. <laughs> so we would Mario. We would have he would always run these drills in practice, where it, it, you know everybody you get in the line, everybody runs down and see how if they could touch the rim or how high over the rim they get. He knew I could barely get the sinking net, and he just would run that drill every day to come and eat Wydell, you know. Well, you know, what if they had a thing like that where you got to be able to touch the rim before you can play? Well, I would have never gotten the game, but I turned in the high score on the team. And so people are different. People have different circumstances. you got to be able to modify things to people because their guidelines are not set up to be rules and let me tell you this. Never let yourself – we're going to talk about guidelines, but never let yourself be bullied by guidelines. Guidelines are there to serve you. You are not there to serve the guidelines. And when it comes to exception, the greater the manager, the smarter they are about when and how to make exceptions. And you know how often you make it? About one out of ten, one out of 20 times. Because nine out of ten times, you better find that's follow the dadgum guidelines. You ain't going to have any guidelines. So you don't want to make exceptions. You don't want to make it known that there are exceptions. But give your freedom to make the exception if you have to. It's like investing on a stock. Sometimes you take a bigger risk. But if you take a bigger risk every time, then you're, everything you invest in is risky. Is that too hard to understand, Mario? No, I love that. I love that, Larry. You know, um, you know it's that's going, awesome. It's like, it's like you, you know, you know, you were young, single, this, that, and the other. We don't recruit young, single people because they're not in the market. They don't have the jobs. They don't have responsibilities. They don't need, they don't need the insurance. They're not settled down where to start in the investing, you know, and, and, and all the other products. They're just not in our market. But every now and then somebody make, you know, you say, uh, I'm going to make an exception. I like this guy. But if you make it every time, you don't have any guy. Your whole thing falls apart. And if you do that on your, you know, but if you, you like in your investing, you know, you get the safe stocks, the normal stocks, they've got good fundamentals. But every now and then you take a flyer on a super risky thing, but it might, ter- might turn out to be an Uber. And so it's the same thing in RVP promotion. Occasionally, rarely you make an exception, but not much. If I was going to wrap this, wrap this up and get into the five things I had people do and the five things I had them be. But the deal is, folks, this is like life. This is why you have to have a big goal. See, I got a big goal for this hour. You know, we had, uh, you know, I got people listening. I got a time frame. I got a deadline. I got to get it done. And so if I get a disconnected signal, I'm going to get it fixed right now. You know, we got to, because why? We got a big goal. We got a lot of people listening. We only got, you know, we got a half hour left. And so that's the way it is with your life. You're always going to have these interruptions. That's why you have to have intensity about what in the heck you're supposed to be doing right now and when you're supposed to be getting it done. This is the way it is. And uh, see, so don't make many exceptions. It undermines your systems, beliefs, and credibility, but make them when you need to make them. And don't make the people feel bad. Make them feel good. Don't, don't. Don't emphasize what they didn't do. Emphasize what they did do. Because somebody, sometimes people just have disasters happen to them out of the blue and knock them out, and there's just no reason to put them through all that rebuilding if they're ready to go. You just use your own thing. One time out of 20, one time out of 10. And so I'll talk more about that if I need to down the road. But five things you have to do. And I'll tell you right now, there's no easy answers on this. In terms, you got to hit this, that, the other. You know, rigid little fragile deadlines. You don't know, have to do this and this. And if you do this, you get out. Stupid, 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 because people can manipulate. So here's five things you have to do. Number one, you got to be far and away the best leader with the biggest team consistently in my base. The only person that goes out of my base is the biggest and best and obvious. you got to fight your way to the top of the stack. And, folks, in my world, there's a lot of people then that fight their way to the top, a lot of competition. You've got to claw your way to the top and be far and away the best one to be next in line to go. Everybody's got to know your time for you to go. If you're not the best with the biggest team consistently in my base, you ain't ready to go, darling. But first of all, you want, you want to go? Here's what you've got to do. Here's what you've got to do. Forget these specific guidelines. You've got to be far and away the best leader with the biggest team on my team. 
anyway. So, three, do you have two strong legs or the equivalent, like a combination of a bunch of districts? Uh, God gracious. If you and your team are consistently make money, growing month to month, and you, you've created a track record of success, and I, what you've created a track record of growth, you know what? You're going to have numbers. I'm trying to prepare them for the realities of life, and the realities of life, it's, it's brutal out there, buddy. You've got to be tough. Life is going to try and knock your butt out. And if you can't handle it as a trainee, Mario, anyway. Okay. So uh, here's the last one, Mario. Bottom line, you got to do. Here's what you got to do. You got to create momentum. Do you have momentum? I'm not going to promote you without momentum. You got to be able to create momentum, and I got to see that you will sustain and maintain your momentum. Are you working in a solid a solid pro in a systematic way. Do you have a system about you? Do you have a routine? Do you have a schedule that will allow yourself to duplicate yourself as you go out there? You're just going to get better and smarter and better and smarter. When you go out the door, you turn well better have a system about yourself so you can improve and you can duplicate in spite of the fact of all the things you don't know. Because you've got to duplicate and compound. Otherwise, you don't have a systematic way about what you do. You're going to be up and down, start and stop, and 15 years later you're going to say, why am I still floundering? So we're trying to – I was always trying to set them up to explode out of the gate and uh, uh, keep running. So I've got, I've got them thinking about momentum. That was the fifth thing. So I need to repeat those, Mario, real quick, and then I'll go to the things you've got to be. Uh, you got to, okay, you've got to be far away the biggest – the best leader with the biggest team of and you got to write clean business and your people got to do the same you got to have two strong legs of the equipment you got to be blowing away the minimum and you got to have momentum i've got to know that you're you you know that you're a pro that you know what you're doing you you do it whether you feel like it or not and you get better at it you got momentum from that because well run businesses grow okay those are things you got to do now here's five things you got to be you got to know the business if we toss your butt out of a uh, plane and give you a, a parachute and drop you out over someplace in Iowa, you've never been there before, you've got to know the business so well, if no one ever comes there, you can build, not only survive, you can build a growing, thriving business because you know the business. The other thing, you've got to be able to manage money personally. You've got that, the bottom line, you've got to be able to know how to live within your means and save money not spend everything you've got you got to be able to put money aside from taxes you got to put money aside for your future you got to be smart enough to manage money personally to live with between your means that's the second thing you got to be third thing you got to be is able to manage business finances the tax world the structure the fees good gracious what we went through uh 800 uh entities to get licenses and permits and this, that, the other, to get over in Worth Avenue. But we got them, and we're open. and made it for sale, gallery Y. But see, it's a good review. You ought to be able to manage business finances because IRS is not going to be, understand, if you, you know, all the state, you got to, you know, there's a lot of things you got to keep up with. And so you got to, you can't overbuy with your office. You got to be able to stay within your financial budget and afford, you know, get an office you can afford. Then work hard, get a bigger but you know, bigger income. Then get a bigger office. But you know, can't be someone who with no income going and signing a five-year lease on a five thousand square foot place on a hope and prayer that God will bless me. Yeah, yeah. That's stupid. God's not going to bless stupidity. So every now and then he'll save your butt when you've been stupid, but he's not consistently blessed stupidity. Uh, Good quality of business. That's the third thing is manage your business finance as well, which is, you know, again, stay within your means. Good quality. Of, the, the fourth thing is persistency. Got to have good. You've got to be somebody who just naturally stays in the market and your people. is somebody we don't have to worry about persistency. And uh, 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 you've got to have not only – see, that's persistency with your product. The fifth thing is you've got to be persistent with your people. You've got to be – somebody who can make a commitment and live up to it. People can trust that you're not squirreling. You're not all over the battlefield. People can believe in you now and you tell them something and they trust because they know you're going to follow through. 
Folks, we got to be your banker as you go out there. I mean, you're going to build, you're going to grow, you're going to get all these checks, you get advances. Uh, if you're squirreling and we can't trust you and then all of a sudden you do something stupid and have a big charge back, we have to eat that money. I don't want to promote someone squirrely I can't trust. Those are five things you've got to be. Those are my, that's what I did, Mario. That's it. Larry, that was awesome. And, Larry, one thing that I want to expand on, and that's good because you get a lot of clarity there on, on doing, uh, doing things big, right? And, Larry, one of the things that um, people are curious because you actually lived it, what were Art Williams' guidelines to get promoted to RVs? Okay, let me ask you a question. Is that a total shift in emphasis from you've got to hit these numbers and hit that numbers? Uh, do you like that approach of the five things you've got to do and five things you've got to be more than looking at a particular target that they can manipulate their way to hitting? <laughs> that was good. i never seen it that way, Larry. That was actually really, really good. That was powerful. Well, see, this is, this is what I did that worked, man. I promoted a ton of people, and they survived. They did great things. But you've got to start talking to them early. And so you don't grow to become a functioning independent leader by somehow – manipulating your way up to ding, 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 hit a couple of numbers two months in a row, and then you go out there, you, you, you know, you're going to fail. So you want to know Art Williams' guideline for promotion? Art never had any guidelines for promotion because he never ran a base shop. That's the truth. When he ran the base shop, you weren't promoting anybody. All you were doing, he worked, you know, we were back with these other, we weren't independent. Art never ran a base shop. He ran us. In other words, he never, if we talk about the National Football League, he never had a team of himself that he had to run. He was a commissioner of the league. And he's the commissioner of the league saying, you know, you set up basic general guidelines. Like in the NFL, there's 32 uh, teams. But they're all independently owned. They're all independently developed. The commissioner didn't develop them. Art didn't, Art didn't recruit one single person for me. He did send me Lou Miller who then sold out and was gone. But, you know, he did refer somebody to me. Uh, you know, there's a limit to how much you could stick your nose in somebody's business when you didn't build it, Mario. Someone wants to stick their nose in your business? Uh, well, first let me go back and have you pay my rent for the last 15 years or 10 years, and then you can open your mouth. But until then, shut up. I'm running my business. I built my business. So Art would put out guidelines and suggestions and this, that, and the other, but, you know, he's like runs the league where the people, the malcontents, will go to the league and say, boo, 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 boo. And so he's just trying to keep peace in the family with his comments and all. But he only had – he wasn't able. It wasn't he wasn't capable. Well, he probably built a million-dollar base shop. Uh, he probably built a $2 million base shop. You know, I'm really not interested in Art Williams' guidelines for promotion past a certain point because he's never operated in our world. I've told him that. But have no mistake about it. Art could have built a $2 million, $5 million base shop. I mean, he's a monster. But he just did not have that capacity uh, from the compensation uh, that the company that we worked for at the time. And so he was the original pioneer in helping getting this thing going to the point where we could improve, 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 improve. Yeah. And so, in, so I would never do anything but honor Art William, you know, uh, you might like or might not like Donald Trump, but I promise you you don't like everything he says. You might like or might not like Barack Obama, but you don't like everything he says. So you might like your parents, but you don't like everything they say. So, you know, I love Art Williams, but I'm not going to agree with everything he says. Uh, when he pays my rent, when he pays your rent, then he can have final say. How about that? And, uh, <laughs> right? Come on. Larry, that's awesome. Larry, I have one big question. Because I think, uh, you know, by hearing what you were telling me in the beginning, because uh, I want to do it big, what should I do, Larry? And I asked you this, and you gave me some tips on this, and it really helped me grow my business. And I want you to tell me your, your attitude about replacement and how you handled replacement, most importantly, in a way that allowed you to, to get big fast, that your RVPs got big, that you got big, you know, because replacement is our secret weapon that people try to copy and it destroys them because they don't know how to do it, but you uh, mastered it, and you had explosive growth, and you helped me have explosive growth also. So if you can expand on that, Larry, to close out the call, that would be very powerful. Well, I can say this. Look, if you're not growing, 
You know, I don't – replacement's not a big deal. It, let me ask you this. Do you get a lot of pushback on replacement, Mario? You know what? Not from the guys that are not for the guys that are doing it right. Like the, my big division, thank, my big regional. Thank, no. Thank, thank you very much for the people. If you got a blowing and going base shop, and the people that are inside, they're growing because a well-run business grows. And when they're growing, they know they know not to hang on. It you know. They, they hate to give up a replacement to go, but they know, it, you know, there's more coming. You know, there's a river coming. You know, if I don't get this salmon, there's another, there, there's an endless stream of salmon coming down the, the, the river. But when you're in a dead pond, you know, you, you, there's no growth. You, you don't, you haven't built a river of business. You built a pond. It's, it's a mud hole. People say, well, if I give you my replacement, I'll never get anything else the rest of my life. That's the primary problem people have with replacement. They have no momentum. They have no track record of growth. They have no – because people, if they're looking up, like you guys, I mean, are you over $2 million yet? Um, no, not in my original business. Yeah. With both, yes, but no. Yeah, they're both, but not with the original business itself. And by the way, congratulations on that. Unbelievable. Thank you. But uh, the, uh, the thing is, your guys know you're going to go over it, right? They know you're probably going to go over three, four, five. So they know the future is unlimited inside Mario world. And so they're expecting things to be big in their world. But you've got guys trying to get replacements off of people that have no vision, have no growth, and the people behind them saying, oh, man, you know, I'm never going to be able to have a team. You know, I, I'm, I'm giving this guy, I'm just going to be a salesman the rest of my life. They, they just can't see it unfolding where they don't think the replacement is worth it because they don't see themselves ever getting a replacement in the picture of the world that you have painted for them because it's not moving forward. So the first way of getting the replacements is you got to be blowing. That's why I started off this whole stinking call and, and it went over everybody's head. That it's a waste of time to have management guidelines if you're not going to have a big vision and get big numbers and momentum and drive, be the person to drive it because then people follow in behind you and they'll agree with you. You know, they'll, it might be uncomfortable or whatever, but they'll say, oh, this is going to pay off. You know, if you're in a growing business, you've been taught a system, you can understand I'll give up a replacement one time, but I'll be able to get them the rest of my life. And if they see you promoting RBT steadily, you know, 10, 20, 30, they'll say, well, I can get 10 or 20 or 30 replacements myself as I promote out my RBPs for this one I'm giving up. But if they don't see you promoting anybody, you know, you're the one poor slob who went to RBP underneath out of that base shop the last one in 20 years, they're going to say, good, Lord, you know, I'm giving up my replacement. I'm not going to get nothing for it. They can't visualize being able to get replacements. So that's really – so for me to tell a guy like that how to handle replacements, it's a lost cause. So that's why I have a little sticking point. Okay? That's awesome. Guys, one big thing that, that – and I'm, Larry, I'm going to just say something about me that helped me out tremendously. Um, guys, look, uh, communication is the key to uh, replacement. And, look, guys, one of the things that I thought was there to destroy me, I'm like, oh, my God, Susan taking, like, my best person, uh, my upline, right? I'm like, how can she do this to me? Now I'm like, thank you, God, Susan, that you were tough on me. Thank you, God, uh, you know, that our, our, our and Susan were tough on me and took a big replacement because now that's all I get. I get big replacements. And, and our, our people, Larry, they fight to leave the biggest replacement. That's when you know you got the right thing, m mindset. When they're like, what's the minimum I can leave you before I get – you're doing something wrong as a leader. You're doing something wrong as an environment. When they, they're thinking like, man, I want to be big because I know whatever I invest, I, I reap tenfold, a hundredfold. Nothing stops you from, from getting ten replacements down the future, 20, 100, doing it big. But, man, I've never seen somebody that does big, like basically low standards, low income, big standards, big income. And I remember hearing some of the calls of back in the day saying, man, to get promoted, you had to move to another state. Bill Render, he had to leave everything behind and move to another state. I was like, wow, man, I, that kind of thing fires me up. Why? Because the contract's so worth it. Because now you're going to yeah. be able to do it. 
And then what a that, blessing. Yeah, that's what I did. I left 75 code numbers. But the thing is that, uh, you know, Mario, people have got to get the picture. You, you know, you got to get in this game whole, whole hog and go for big, and then things start – all these things start to work out for you. It's not – you know, you're never, you're never going to figure it out being small. You know, you got to figure it out by getting big. And all of these things will start to work for you. A lot of things to talk about. Hope this has been helpful. And, uh, Adam, uh, I think we've wrapped up. Marty, do you want to say a final word and then turn over to Adam for the last uh, comments? Absolutely, guys. Look, uh, one, one of the biggest things that we always focused on, I'm like, man, what are the giants? I want an explosive group. And I didn't see anyone have explosive growth having a small mindset. So that's why I got on these calls. And as soon as we focused on being the biggest division, then the biggest regional, then we became the biggest. Guys, you've got to fight for that. You can be big. You can be big. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can be big. You can make a decision that you're the one. You're the one and change that hierarchy forever. Change that base shop forever because you decided to be big. And I can't wait to be interviewing you on the big hitter call or or from Uncle Larry interviewing you because you did it big and you're explosive growth. You have what it takes to do it big. So go get it done. Thank you, Mario. That's great. Well, I guess that wraps it up, right? Go, 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 everybody. Have a big week. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Million Dollar Mastermind with me, Larry Wydell. If I've helped you in any way, leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. For more information like this, listen to our other Million Dollar Mastermind episodes and check out my Wydell Academy YouTube channel and visit us on WydellOnWinning.com. I'm the Million Dollar Mastermind and until next time, go, go, go.